guys， 今天是除夕，祝大家牛年快乐。这一只是牛宝，它可不可爱呀、啊、？Today is Chinese New Year, and today I've got something special for you. I'm going to read chapter five to all of you. I know I'm going to read chapter five. Well, but I'm very busy because I've got a lot of homework. Vian also wants to know about chapter five too. Are you there, Vian? I hope she will laugh at the end of this chapter because I read that bit to her. When I read that to her, she laughed and laughed. So let's get started. Chapter five. I was very sad when I woke up. We didn't have a family night in because we were in a rush for something unexpected. First, we had a special breakfast. We always have breakfast gato. Or strawberry trifle, and wash it down with a strawberry milkshake. But today, this kind of breakfast was for a celebration. We ate jam sandwiches and washed them down with a cup of hot chocolate with whipped cream and pink marshmallows floating on top. I was allowed three sips, and Alicia was allowed four sips. The four cups of hot chocolate. Or just a special offer from Seven Eleven. Do you know what is a family night in? Everyone lies together on a bed because they are family. I expect it. This means that we don't know when is this going to happen. Today or tomorrow. So in this story, something I expected is them moving into a new room and changing new bedrooms, changing bedrooms. That is unexpected because we didn't know when is it going to happen, today or tomorrow. This special celebration breakfast was to celebrate that Alicia was moving in with me, and Mum and Dad are going to move to a new room. So this drawing, well, this is me drinking a cup of hot chocolate, and I'm standing in my Jenny Den. In this story, my Jenny Den is about to get. Unpainted is about to get new paint because it is going to be me and Alicia's room in this story. Alicia got so sad when her bed got chucked up and thrown out into our garden. Alicia was very, very sad when her bed was dumped into our junkyard. Alicia cried bottles and bottles. I'll never ever sleep with Jenny in her room. She's got her dreadful animals and insects. She messes about with my things. Oh yes, here's an idiom I want to tell you: mess about with somebody or someone's things. It means to make a huge mess with somebody or someone's things. Do you know what is a junkyard? Okay, I know that we have got a home, which is well behind that big tree over there, and there is a junkyard where it dumps all the things the person doesn't want, like wheels, balls, toys, furniture, and other things that the person doesn't want. Anisha not only cried bottles, she cried pools and pools and pools. She could fill a fountain with her own pool of tears. I was so sad.
sad when my Jenny then was have been scrubbed down, but I cheered up when Dad said that we were going to paint all of the room's walls with environmental paint rollers and buckets of environmental paint. That's very funny, right? I mean, look at this page. Alicia cried, bottles and bottles? <laughs> this is funny. I mean, how can a person cry tears which can throw into bottles? This is very funny, right? No, this is much funnier. Alicia not only cried bottles, she cried pools and pools and pools. She could fill a fountain with her own pool of tears. This is probably appropriate because we can say a pool of tears. If this person is crying a lot of tears, maybe that's able to fill a fountain. Anyway, who can cry pools and pools and pools? That's very funny, right? First, we painted Mom's room. I changed my t-shirt into Alicia's disgustingly pink kitten t-shirt and started to paint Mom's room light pink because Mom just liked this color. Then, Dad painted me and Alicia's bedroom dark pink because Alicia loved this color. So it's all set. Anisha is going to move in with me and her room is going to be dark pink because she loved this color and she also suggested that color in this story. And in this story, I put myself in this story and I was a tomboy just like Rian. Isn't that right Rian? I'm a tomboy just like you in this story. I painted that room bright blue. Blue is Dad's all-time favorite color. I looked at me and Alicia's room. I wanted Mighty Jenny to appear on the walls, but Alicia was saying that Mighty Jenny is a pathetic superhero. So I told Mighty Jenny that she should stay invisible on the walls so Alicia couldn't see her. Do you know this word called pathetic? It means that this person isn't very isn't very good at doing something. I mean, in this story, Anisha said that, well, she thought that Mighty Jenny isn't good at doing anything. I mean, Mighty Jenny, Anisha thought that Mighty Jenny has got not so good superpowers. Anisha thought that she, Anisha thought that herself has got more powerful superpowers. She thought that Mighty Jenny is pathetic. Whoops, I just need to get my zip. Wait, this idea is great in this story because I told Mighty Jenny that she should stay invisible on the walls so Alicia couldn't see her. Like a ghost, I mean. Ghosts stay invisible, so Mighty Jenny could stay invisible too. That is her new superpower. Staying invisible is Mighty Jenny's new superpower. It was so unfair. Mom and Dad told Anisha that there's no need to cry. She'll share my bed with me. They said that Anisha was a good girl and gave her secret cuddles and air kisses. 这个就是我们说的偏心。在故事里面，妈妈还有大，明明就很爱我，但结果他们又去爱Anisha。这个不是偏心吗？本来就是的。I don't understand why did you tell Anisha that she was a good girl? I'm a good girl too, you know that. I said and started to cry. Turn off the waterworks, Jenny. I know that you are a good girl too, but Alicia has already chosen her own bedroom and she's going to move in with you, said Dad. That means that Alicia once shared a room with Mom in this story when I had my Jenny then. 
And now, when my thing was about to get scrubbed down, the walls are about to get scrubbed down, Anisha chose her own bedroom, that her own bedroom is going to be mine. Well, her own bed in mom and her mom and her room. Well, I mean, Anisha's bed is chucked out and dumped into the junkyard because that bed is a bit scruffy and shabby. So she chose mine to be her new bedroom. Oh yes, by the way, here's a word. No, I mean, here's a sentence I want to teach you. Have you ever heard someone say, turn off the waterworks? It means that this person told you to stop crying. You might thought that waterworks is another kind of firework, but it isn't made of fire. It is made out of water. Waterworks? I haven't heard of that word. I mean, what kind of a word is that? I realized that Anisha once shared a bedroom with mom when I had my Jenny then. Why can't Anisha have red carpet instead of pink? I said. She just got her pink carpet last year and she likes pink too, said mom. You don't care if your thing is chucked out, wouldn't you? said dad. I mean, Anisha is a girly girl too. And I'm a tomboy girl in this story. And then, look at this. This sentence means that my ten words are scrubbed down in this story and I, if I would care or wouldn't care. I would care because I love my Jenny then. Yes, I would, I said. I couldn't stop crying. Mom also took Anisha's side and she even bought Anisha dark pink carpet. I wanted to go back to my Jenny den, but my den has vanished. My other den has also disappeared, and now there was just disgustingly pink fluffy carpet there. There are two dens in my Jenny den in this story. Do you know what does take someone's side means? Do you know what does take somebody or someone's side mean? It means, well, in Chinese, we say it like this, 偏心偏心就是在讲说这个人他本来是 I, well, I mean, in this story, mom likes me, but then she likes Anisha. So that is, take somebody's side, right? Anymore. If I haven't got a thing, Hercules, Hades, Dionysus, Wilma, Little Blue, Zeus, Eddie, Hephaestus. Polly wouldn't have enough room to swim, climb, and fly. Also, they don't like to live in cardboard boxes. It's like they're in cages, I said. Well, I'm good at describing things. In this story, I described the cardboard boxes as cages. They look like animals which were in cages at the zoo. But in this story, my animals and insects Want to free them? I know that girls don't have dens, but you're a tomboy and you can have the left side of your bed as your den. We can keep your bed in you and Alicia's room. By the way, who's Zeus? Is he your only gummy rhinoceros beetle? said Dad. Yes, and he's nearly starving to death because there aren't any food pieces in this room, I said. As I've said before, in this story, Zeus likes to eat food pieces. I knew for a fact that insects, mm, nope, 
Wild beetles love to eat fruit. Zeus is a wild beetle too. He's a common rhinoceros beetle, but he's also a wild beetle. I pondered about snuffing pieces of fruit into Alicia's room. Alicia would mind about her carpet if it was dirty. Me and my animals and insects don't have freedom in me and Alicia's room. This meant that, well, this one is Alicia's room. Well, Alicia's chosen this room to be her bedroom. This room only takes up too much space. Well, I mean, I took up so much space in this drawing. Well, I mean, I drew this picture of the room, so and I took up too much space. And my animals and insects don't have freedom in this room because that room looks like a cage. What? Do you know what does snuffle means? It means to take something without some people, without people noticing. But Hercules, my origami Hercules beetle, are still guarding me and Alicia's room away from Alicia. As I've said before in this story, Hercules, the Hercules beetle. I mean, Hercules, my origami Hercules beetle. Is a guardian for my Jenny then. Mom even bought Anisha a black chandelier. I'll show you a chandelier. This is a chandelier. Diao Deng. It's like a wishing chandelier, said Anisha. I stared at the black chandelier, and it really looks like a wishing chandelier, but it wasn't decorated. By wishing dust. This chandelier looks like a wishing chandelier, right? It looks a bit magical. Maybe it's a magic chandelier. Wishing dust, as I've said before in this story, wishing dust is a kind of dust. It looks like common dust, but it isn't common dust. It is used for wishing. That's what. Tom's mom, I mean, Mrs. Wong, sprinkled wishing dust on me when I went to Tom's awful party. I know what wish I will make. I will be back in my den, and Alicia could have her weird pink room. I will also turn into Mighty Jenny and fly to school. I will zap head for Tom. Mini Horace and Spike for Tony with laser beams that shoot out from my eyes until they turn into big black bloated snorks. This is a bit funny, right? No, I mean this wish a bit is a bit funny, right? Well, it said that I will, I will be back. No, that isn't funny. This is funny. I will. Turn, I will turn into Mighty Jenny and fly to school. I will zap hit for Tom, Mini Horse, and spy for Tony with laser beams that shoot out from my eyes, and then they turn into big black bloated snakes. This is just in saying that I will, I will, I will become Mighty Jenny and fly to school. I will zap hit for Tom, Mini Horse, and spy for Tony. Use Laser beam, 从会从我的眼睛射出来的镭射病，直到它变成很大又黑又肿肿的阔鱼。I know what are snakes. They are those snails who don't have a shell. I've caught a snake before, and I've seen one really a brown one. Well, it was little, and it was bloated too. If they didn't notice me standing behind them, I'll stamp on them with my sketchers trainers. It was far more worse at school. Tom, Horace, and Tony called me a name. Aphid.
They were the worst boys in my class. They like to tease people. They call me this name because I wore that green party dress to Tom's party. Oh yes, I've got a question for you. If we stomp on that snog, will the snog survive or die? As I've said before, that green party dress in this story is the color of aphids. Aphids are tiny green insects. Well, they use asexual reproduction. The female aphid, well, she doesn't need to mate with the male aphid. She will give birth to babies without laying any eggs. She'll give birth to a clone to the babies. The babies are the exact clone of his mother. But when the babies grow up and turn into female snugs, not female snugs, <laughs> female aphids, they will mate with a male aphid. I mean, when the babies of that female aphid grow up, they will mate with a male aphid. Try to ignore them, Janie. Never ever play games with them, said Alice. She was my BFF, best friend forever, and she was very lucky because she didn't go to Tom's awful party. She's very skinny and she can stand up to the bullies. Do you know what a stand up to the bullies? It means to stop the bullies. Do you know who is Alice? She is my classmate at school. She's pretty and she's got a long she's got a long black ponytail. Here. She's also scared of stuff such as aphids, spiders, talking in front of everyone, reading a book, and honeydew. She's especially scared of Tom and his best friends. They were fierce, horrendous, and Horrible boys. I mean that Tom and his best friends are hateful. And they are spiteful too. Meanies. They are meanies. But when Tom wasn't looking, Horace and Tony played soccer with me. That's beginning to make an two BFFs, right? I mean, when Tom was looking, Horace and Tony will become more and more spiteful and hateful. But when Tom wasn't looking, Horace and Tony wouldn't be spiteful or hateful. They were, well, they would become BFFs of mine in this story. Some boys and girls joined in too. When I scored the goal, Horace and Tony would pat me on my back and say that I was ace at kicking soccer. This means that Horace and Tony would pat me on my back and say that I was a champion. Well, I mean, I was good at kicking soccer. This This Horace and Tony wouldn't tease me when Tom wasn't on the playground. Think here, I mean, the last passage here is positive, not exactly. But when we were playing football game, Tom came, and this time Horace and Tony became more and more horrible. It means that when Tom was with Horace and Tony, Horace and Tony will become more and more hateful. But when Tom wasn't with Horace and Tony, Horace and Tony would become BFFs of mine. But I still prayed, no matter what. When it was Tommy's turn to kick the ball, he kicked the ball straight at my neck hard. They all tittered at me. I knew that they were just trying to wind me up. Do you know what does wind somebody or someone up mean? It means to annoy someone or somebody. I tried really hard to ignore. I really care about them.
By lunchtime, I went to the library because I wanted to know more about the word aphid. Jane, the lady who was on library duty, smiled at me. By the way, she knows our names. If we tell her our names, she'll understand. Hi, Jenny. Why are you here? I've seen an encyclopedia about insects and another encyclopedia about Siberian animals, said Jane. Oh, by the way, I'll show you an aphid. My book! Okay? This is an aphid, a female aphid giving, a, giving birth to a miniature to those babies which were the exact clone of its mother. This is an aphid, a female aphid actually. them, but I would take a look at the encyclopedia about insects, I said. What a good girl, said Jane. I flipped through the pages. I found a page which was about aphids. Aphids are tiny green insects. Do you know why I would take a look at the encyclopedia about insects? That's because I wanted to know more about the word aphid. They drink the sap from plants, which will make them produce a sweet urine called honeydew. The female aphid doesn't need to mate with the male. She'll give birth to her babies. The babies are the exact clone of its mother. But when the babies grow up and turn into adult female aphids, they will mate with male aphids. Do you know what a clone means? It means to copy something. After mating, the females will lay batches of eggs. Next, I looked at the encyclopedia about Siberian animals that live in the cold, chilly Siberia. When I flipped through the pages, what I really saw blew me away. I saw Siberian salamanders, musk deer, amur leopards, yakut horses, Siberian lynxes, a Siberian unicorn, and so on. Do you know what a batch means? It means a lot of eggs. A batch of eggs means a lot of eggs. What will those animals do in order to survive the cold temperature? Oh yes, here is a phrase and also an idiom I want to teach you. Blow someone or somebody away means to surprise or impress someone. What will those animals do in order to survive the cold temperature? But the Siberian unicorn was the only animal that blew me away. It looks weird. It was half rhino and half buffalo. It doesn't have a long twisty horn like unicorns. It has got a horn of a rhino. This is only a fantasy animal. What? In real life world, we couldn't see it. It doesn't have hooves like horses, and its legs were big, not little. I thought Mighty Johnny would keep three Siberian animals. Mighty Johnny had three bull animals in her ball pool. An orca, a narwhal, and a striped dolphin. Those were bob animals in this picture, but I can't draw bob animals. I haven't seen bob animals before. So I only drew real knife animals. These are not real knife animals. These are blow up animals. Worse dog. Those were not animals. They were toys made out of balloons. They were only balloons which were made to look like animals. 
Mighty Jenny should keep a Siberian lynx, six Yakut horses, and a Siberian unicorn. Well, real, I mean fake animals aren't real, right? So Mighty Jenny should keep real animals. Thank you for giving me the two encyclopedias, Jane, I said, putting them back on the bookshelf. You're welcome, you cute little girl, said Jane. Jane seems like a kind lady, right? I wanted to get a piece of paper and a pencil to sketch it out during lessons, but our homeroom teacher, Mr. Tai, had a very strict rule that students shouldn't draw pictures during lessons. That's what happened in our school. Our homeroom teacher, Mr. Tai, Mr. Tai, banned students drawing on books or on pieces of paper during lessons. But we can draw pictures during break time. This is okay. But we shouldn't draw pictures during lessons. You could only draw them at break time. I had to wait and wait and wait. In the afternoon, we had to learn very boring lessons. English, math and social studies. English was very, very boring. We had to learn A to Z. So I had to wait until I came home this Monday afternoon. I think I could get my plush animals too. I'll get eight animals. A plush grey lynx, six horses and a golden hairy horse with a toothpick stuck on its head. I'm not a girly girl, but I still like animals and insects. I finished my homework at school so that I got more free time to draw my Mighty Jenny adventures. Hmm, this eight animals, one plush grey lynx, six Yakut horses and a golden hairy horse and a toothpick stuck on his head. Six plus two equals eight. Well, girly girls play plush grey plush animals. But I'm not a girly girl, I'm a tomboy. I play with plush animals and I still like playing with my animals and insects. When I got back home, I ran into me and the room, opened the cardboard boxes and let my animals and insects loose. Do you know what does let something loose? It means to open the cages and free and free those animals. Oh yes, here's something which is similar to pull somebody or someone away. It is like this. Let somebody or someone's jaw drop on the floor. I let teacher and more H's jaw drop on the floor because I impressed her by showing her my drawings. She went, oh, where's my jaw? Where's my jaw? I can't find my jaw. Got my drawing book picked up my stationary stuff and started drawing. I drew a big, ferocious Siberian lynx on the first page. Mighty Jenny could keep this lynx. This lynx could be a guardian for a den or an animal for Mighty Jenny to tame. This is the Siberian lynx. It looks like a big cat. Then I drew six Yakut horses trotting along the path, covered in snow. So those are the Yakut horses. Brown, yellow and white Yakut horses. Mighty Jenny could keep a big stable of horses and she could also ride one of the horses and be a cowboy and catch horses on her ranch. She hasn't got a ranch, so she has to make do with her room. Do you know what does make do with something mean? It means that this person hasn't got something, so this person should use something instead of that thing. Make do 就是在讲说, 这个人就是, 就是在讲说, 
make do with something 就是在讲说用东西来代替什么东西。Third, on the other page, I do mighty Johnny riding on a Siberian unicorn, a fantasy animal. I've never heard of people riding on Siberian unicorns, but this is more exciting. Well, I made it all up. Mighty Johnny, what? Well, this seems like riding on a horse, right? She used wool rings, a harness, and a bell. They come in a yellow color. Big silver horseshoes and a big purple saddle to tame the unicorn. She didn't fall off the unicorn because she grabbed hold of the two blue rings. This unicorn looks cute, right? My teacher, teacher M O H, says that she wishes that the Siberian unicorn would appear outside her houses. That the Siberian unicorn would appear in her park, in the park near her house. Well, outside her house. Maybe she can make make do with. A deer. If she sees a deer, she will pretend that it's a Siberian unicorn because when the deer lowers its head and starts to eat grass, it looks like the deer has got one horn instead of two horns. She could also keep it in her stable, though she would tame it well because the unicorn wouldn't get along with the Yakut horses, and she could also buy a packet of horse feed for them to eat. I got on my plush animals, put them on the carpet, and ran to the garage. Maybe I wanted to show off those drawings to my family. Dad was making two shelves. Dad, look at my drawings. Oh yes, by the way, here's something. Well, well, this would. Be a bit squashed because there are already six Yakut horses in the stable. So if the if the Siberian unicorn moves in, is about to get moved into the stable, would it be a bit of a squash? Because look at this Siberian unicorn; it is big. Maybe that wouldn't be a big of a bit of a squash if that stable was big enough. Dad was making two shelves. Dad, look at my drawings. I learned how to draw the fiercest Siberian lynx and the most adorable Yakut horses. Mighty Johnny also learned how to ride and tame a Siberian unicorn. I'd love to see them, but I'm making two shelves," said Dad. "I'll help you make the two shelves," I said, helping Dad pick up pieces of wood and putting them under the shelves. I don't need your help. I can build the shelves all by myself," said Dad, putting the pieces of wood back on the shelves. I'm getting a bit muddled when I'm making the shelves. It's like solving a puzzle. Clear off now, pal," said Dad. So I left Dad alone, and I went to Mom and Alicia's room. Seems like Dad is busy in his story. So Mom and Alicia, I'll show it to my animals and insects. And I went to Mom and Alicia's room. Only it wasn't their room at all. It was Mom's dressmaking workshop. I saw Mom making another green silky dress for the girl in year three. I even saw Alicia sewing a piece of big bobby dark pink silk. What's that big bobby thing you're sewing? I said. It's a big fluffy cushion for us to sit on. You can sew the other cushion, which is for you to sit on," said Alicia. That cushion looks like a big dark pink blob. What? No thanks. Take a look at my new Mighty Johnny adventure," I said scornfully. "I don't want to look at your superhero adventure. Mighty Johnny can only go zap, 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 zap by shooting laser beams." Out of her eyes and the bodies here and there. No, she doesn't do it always, especially in her newest one. She still saves the day with her superhero friends. 
I also drew a Siberian unicorn and the lynx. I bet you can't draw them. If you were me, they look difficult to draw, but they look easy to me. I said ominously. I couldn't draw those two animals if I were you, said Alicia. I sighed and stomped back to my room. Seems like everyone is busy at the moment. I'll show my animals and insects my mighty Jenny adventure. It wasn't my room now. It wasn't my comfy, wonderful den. It was me and Alicia's room. It also looked like a cage for my animals and insects. The cardboard boxes were a terrible curse because I couldn't bear it if I caged my animals and insects in them. They wanted freedom. Eventually, they ran out of the boxes. They have freedom. That's because I let them loose, right? I got all my pretend animals. A big ball of white yarn. Sorry. The two white marbles and my sketchbook. Do you know why I got out a big ball of white yarn and some little white marbles? Because they were used for the scene of Siberia. I let my animals and insects exercise for a bit because their limbs were a bit crumpled. That's because some of the animals squashed up were squashed up in a box and the other animals and insects get a bit squashed and their limbs got a bit crumpled. Wilma so this is Wilma the whale. Wilma swam down to the bottom of the sea and spouted water. Hades crawled under the pink and black jungle. Zeus found pieces of food under the cardboard boxes. Hephaestus flew up to the pink sky. Little Blue crawled into the pink forest. Dionysus wriggled under the forest and into the high fermentation soil. So it looks like they look like they have freedom. And Polly flew up to the shiny black globe. All is left is Eddie. She can just wander around the dark pink forest. I mean, she can walk, take a walk in the dark pink forest. She looked it as skill, but I do hope Alicia wouldn't make a fuss about her chandelier. I'm glad you've all got freedom, my dolls. Wait, I need to count my animals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. One. I'll show you Mighty Johnny's new adventure. She goes to Siberia today. It's a place which is full of animals, including fierce lynxes, adorable Yakut horses, and the fantasy Siberian unicorn. She can keep a lynx as an animal to tame or a guardian for a den. She can get a stable and keep six Yakut horses and a Siberian unicorn. She can also pretend she's a western cowboy and catch horses on a ranch. Actually, her ranch is her room. And she always saves the day. I named my golden hairy unicorn trot around the snow, alone with the six horses, while the lynx prowled in his snow den, hoping for an animal to stumble upon the den and the lynx could have a feast. I made neighing and trotting and swishing and zapping and commanding and roaring noises. I also did some gestures too. I was sitting cross-legged on the pink carpet playing with my plush animals, telling my animals and insects about Mighty Jenny's adventures, making noises, and doing some gestures. Wait, I forgot about Eddie too. If she was in a cardboard box, she wouldn't have enough freedom. She wants to be free, and she wants to walk around the dark pink forest. I got so enthusiastic, I didn't even hear Alicia tiptoe to our room. I got so enthusiastic, 
I didn't even hear Anisha tiptoe to our bedroom. But Anisha heard me. She opened the door and took a peek. You're a weird girl. You're a nutcase. Why have you got your animal sending sex all over my carpet? said Anisha. Anisha walked into our room and hurled them back into the boxes. Stop that! You'll hurt their bodies. I'll take Hercules out and he'll quit your hand hard because he saw you throwing his companions back into the boxes, I said, taking my pets out. Then, suddenly, I heard a loud hissing sound. Zeus was eating some food under the two big cardboard cages. What's that thing on the carpet? For goodness sake, Jenny, this insect is revolting. I wondered about some used lip gloss because I found the lip gloss trail in your room. Look at your beetle. It's covered in lip gloss all over itself, said Alicia. The hissing sound was from Zeus, not Hercules. Hercules doesn't hiss very loudly. Zeus does. Alicia started picking up her hairbrush and scrubbing his body. Stop that! He likes to be red and shiny. I'll take Hercules out again and you'll grip your hand more hardening hard, I said indignantly. I grabbed Zeus away from her. I didn't tuck him hard because I knew for a fact that if I tuck any kind of beetle off my hand, it will get hurt. I used my fingers and started to prise his little claws away from Alicia's hand carefully. Don't be silly. He's only an origami beetle. How come can your pathetic animals and insects get hurt? They're just paper cutters made of paper or fabric, said Alicia. I'm a tomboy who likes being creative. I cut things out of paper, and I want to let Mighty Jenny have her own adventures and make new friends to help her by defeating the baddies. They're not pathetic or fake. They're real animals and insects. Do you want me to let Hercules grip you with his mandibles? I yelled. I took Hercules out. He crawled into the dark pink jungle. He crawled onto Alicia's hand and he gripped her fingers hard with his mandibles. Good boy. He's a menace when he opened his mandibles. When I had my thing, he was also my guardian. I said triumphantly. He made Alicia shriek and tilt her head sideways. She saw Polly Pout perching on her chandelier. Look at my chandelier. You've knocked it askew. I'm going to tell you. Mom, Jenny's not my precious lamb askew. You're a mean, pathetic, telltale tit, I said. Do you know what is a telltale tit? It is a person who always tells on somebody. Wait a minute, I need to fetch the screwdriver and another, said Mom. You've made a huge mess in our room, said Alicia. If you say another thing about my animals and insects making a huge mess in our room, I'll take Hercules out again and he'll quip you even harder, I said indignantly. You made my room look like a junkyard, said Alicia, pushing Hades off the fluffy rope. Don't you dare attack him. He's another menace. He is when he opens his mandibles. Quip Alicia hard, Hades. Alicia pushed you, I said. Hades was ferocious. He flew out of the pink and black jungle and gripped Anisha's hand hard. He thinks Anisha is a boring, annoying, and girly big sister. Okay, I knew that Anisha is a girly girl, but she's also a hateful telltale tip. If Anisha told on me, I'll tell Hades that he should quip Anisha again to stop her. He made Anisha shriek too. Alicia thought that she wasn't scared of Hades or Hercules, but they are ferocious and will quip her hand if she annoys them. When I looked at Polly, she was about to get burned because the lamb's heat was too hot and Polly Parrot was very delicate when the lamb's heat started to burn. Mom finally came upstairs and the daughter and the screwdriver this lamp just needs a bit of straightening because it has been knocked askew. Janie, don't put your parrot on the chandelier. It might get burned. Don't play with your animals and insects. You can play with your plush animals. Plush animals, they are made out of plush. 
some wool or fluff. This is a plush animal. It's made out of plush. How about you and Alicia come into my workshop and help me sew two cushions now, said Mom. I love playing with my animals and insects. I also like playing with my plush animals. But when my classmate Josie came to our house, she said that plush animals look babyish. And babies could play with them, but big girls or boys can't play with them. Who wants to sew two boring, horrendous dark pink cushions? Do you know what this horrendous means? It means dreadful or horrible. I'd rather prefer to play with my pets and draw Mighty Johnny Adventures, but Mum insisted that if I don't help her sew the second cushion, she'll send me into me and Alicia's room in disgrace. So I did. Me and Alicia went into Mom's workshop. I was given a huge piece of dark pink silk for me to sew. I took out the pink and some dark pink string and started to sew. I sewed in and out backwards and forwards, left and right and sideways. Mom started to make pink and white beads and frills on the green dress. She also bought pink ballet shoes and pink socks. I waggled my tongue at Anisha when Mom wasn't looking. Maybe that's because I hate Anisha because she's a girly girl. Do you know what does waggle your tongue? It means to stick out your tongue and waggle it. This is very funny. I read Rian that bit too. I looked at my cushion. It was turning into a big dark pink blob. When I picked it up, it went squelch, squelch. I'm not good at sewing. My cushion didn't look good, but I still liked it. Some girly girls sew their cushions. Well, they are good at sewing and their cushions look good. But mine didn't look good. But I still liked it because I'm a tomboy. Time for a quiz! Quiz. Question number one. Is the Siberian unicorn real and lives in Siberia? Or it only lived in the Ice Age along with the mammoths? Question number two. What does the phrase blow someone away mean? Does it mean to really blow someone away? <laughs> this is very funny. Blow someone away? From the phrase, if we look at those words, it means to really blow someone away. But what about its meaning? Question number three. According to the first question, what does the Siberian unicorn really look like in your memory? Please draw it. Cool. You don't have to draw the same unicorn that Jenny drew in this story. You should answer and think about those three questions and how to answer them. So this is today's video. I hope that my best friend May will watch this too. I hope my two other best friends, Vian and Iris, will watch this video too. I hope that they will find this video very interesting and very funny at the end. Thank you so much. Bye for now.